Hello, welcome to our training video on the Piranha Iron Worker Machine. My name is Lewis, Mechanical Production Manager at ASC Process Systems. And in this video, I will be teaching you how to operate this machine safely and efficiently. If you are looking for a specific section to review, each station's time code is listed below in the description field of this video. Let's begin with an introduction to the machine and its abilities. The Piranha Iron Worker has four stations. The punch station, the shearing station, the angle shearing station, and the notcher station. Each station is designed for a different function. The punch station is used to punch holes in material like this. We use this punch station on material to insert bolts. Using this punch station is faster than using a drill or a drill press because the punch station on this machine clamps the material automatically when making its punch. Because of this feature, this punch will allow you to make multiple punches quickly without having to reclamp the material each time like you would with a drill or drill press. The shearing station is used to cut flat bar, round bar, and sheet material. We use this station for cutting plates, support brackets, and spacers for capture rings. To shear metal means to cut it. Using this station instead of an angle grinder is not only easier but faster with its ability to set limit points. The angle shearing station is directly to the left of the shearing station and is used to cut angle bar. Here at ASC, we use the angle cutting station to fabricate many parts such as brackets, vacuum racks, limit switch brackets, and motor brackets, just to name a few. Finally, the notcher station is used to notch material. Notching material refers to taking out sections of the material instead of just making a single line cut. This is an example of what the notcher station can do when it is used to cut material. We use the notcher station for making standoffs, frames for small water pumps, and for cutting angles out of the material to allow it to bend into the form we need. Before you use any of these stations, make sure you have all the required PPE on which includes safety glasses, hearing protection, cut resistant gloves, safety shoes, a face shield, and a hard hat. And always refer to the reference guide for an indication of the maximum capacities of each station. Before we explain how to properly use each station, let's go through some of the machine's anatomy. The Piranha Iron Worker is controlled with its control box and foot pedal. The control box is located below the punch station to the right of the machine, and for most usage, the foot pedal is most efficient to conduct your work. On this control box, you will see two sides, front and rear. On the front of the control box, you will see the foot pedal toggle switch the foot pedal receptacle, and the up and down push buttons. On the rear of the control box, you will find another foot pedal toggle switch and foot pedal receptacle, along with a front and rear selector switch. There are two start and stop buttons on this machine, and the front start and stop button is located on top of the control box. The rear start and stop button is located at the other side of the machine. These start and stop buttons serve as safety precautions when operating or changing any tooling on the machine. Next, there are two limit switches located next to the angle shearing station. These limit switches allow you to set the limit of your cuts while using the foot pedal. This saves time when you're making multiple cuts. Lastly, there is a bucket and a tray located at the back of the machine where all of your cut material will gather. Make sure to retrieve your cuts from this bucket or tray before leaving the machine. This machine is rated for 50 tons and every section of the machine has its own rated capacity. There is a chart hanging from the machine on the angle shear side by the control box where you will find the correct capacities of the punch station according to the thickness of the material you are cutting. The other station's capacities are located on the sticker above the shear station. 
If the chart indicates it is rated for under 50 tons, then you can proceed to make your punches. If the chart indicates with the asterisk, that means that the machine is not rated for it. Let's go to turning on the machine. Before turning on the machine, make sure you have all of the required PPE. Next, make sure that your work area is clean and free of obstacles. Now let's inspect the machine. Check the power cord and make sure that it's free from any visual damage. And check for any hydraulic leaks. Make sure to also check any physical damage to the machine itself. If there's a problem with the machine when checking it, perform a lockout tagout and notify document control to create a service task. That can be done on channel one of the shop radios that you'll find on some of the building columns throughout the shop floor. Next, make sure you have your material marked and measured according to the drawings. Use a square measurement tool to find your punch or cutting point and mark it. If this material will be punched at the punching station, use a center punch to mark your material. Now that your material is measured, marked, and in place at the station you will be operating, you are now ready to turn on the machine. In order to start the machine, both start and stop buttons must be in the up positions. Once they are both in the up position, the machine is unlocked and ready for operation. To stop the machine at any time, only one of these buttons will need to be pushed. Before making any tooling changes, push a stop button and lock out, tag out the machine. The Piranha Iron Worker is controlled with the control box and foot pedal. The Piranha has two modes, manual mode and automatic, which is shown as on or off. On is for automatic and off is for manual mode. Manual mode is only for use with the up and down push buttons, while automatic mode is for use with the foot pedal. To toggle these modes, use the foot pedal toggle switch located on the front and the rear of the control box. The front side of the control box is designed for use with the punch and both shearing stations, while the rear side of the control box is only designed for the use of the notcher station. This is mainly for safety purposes. For making manual cuts with the up and down push buttons, you will switch the toggle to the off position. When utilizing the foot pedal to make cuts, push the switch to the on position. The foot pedal is the best and easiest way to make quick, efficient cuts. The foot pedal works in two ways. Pushing down on the pedal will lower the blades and depressing or taking your foot off of the pedal will raise the blades. This allows you to work with your body facing the material you're cutting while being able to hold it instead of using the push buttons, which will require you to lean and reach in order to press each button. Doing this results in losing the ability to hold your material effectively. On both sides of the control box, there is a foot pedal receptacle. The cable to the foot pedal must be plugged into the side of the station it is dedicated to. The punch and shear station is linked to the front receptacle and the notcher station is dedicated to the rear. Finally, make sure the front or rear selector switch is appropriately set depending on which side of the control box your foot pedal is plugged into. There are two levers or switches located to the left of the angle shearing section. These are called the limit switches. These limit switches, when set correctly, allow you to save time on each of your cuts due to allowing you control over height and depth of each stroke. These limit switches are for use with the foot pedal and will allow you to clear the material for the cut effortlessly and successfully cut all the way through the material with the pressing and release of the pedal. Setting the limit switches is very easy and useful and is important so that you do not bottom out the machine and overheat the hydraulic pumps. While the machine is in the off position, place your material on the station you will be using, right next to or up against the blades and or punch. Next, with your PPE on, turn on the machine by making sure both start and stop buttons are in the up position and switch the machine to manual mode. This turns off the foot pedal control, activating only the up and down push buttons. 
Now make sure the selector switch is appropriately set. Using the up and down push buttons, raise the punch blade and or notcher to the maximum needed clearance for your material and set the first limit switch. To set the upstroke of the machine, unscrew the bolt holding the lever on the right and place the lever so that it touches the indicator wheel on the inside of the control box. To set the downstroke of the machine, use the down push button to find the bottom of the cuts you need. And once in position, unscrew the bolt on the left lever and place it so that it is touching the other indicator wheel on the inside of the control box. Keep in mind, when setting your limit switch for the notcher station, only the upstroke can be set. Also, the limit switch and the push button rolls are reversed, meaning the upstroke for the notcher station will be the left lever, the downstroke will be the right lever. And to lift the blade of the notcher station, you will push the down button on the control box. Each station will have different limits to the downstroke due to the machine having multiple stations in different locations so set your limit switches accordingly. Once both strokes are set, change the foot pedal toggle selector to the on position for automatic. Confirm your foot pedal is plugged into the correct receptacle and select the appropriate front or rear orientation. You are now able to use the foot pedal to make efficient cuts. Remember, there is no downstroke for the notcher station and when using the notcher station, limit switches and up and down push button rolls are reversed. Now that the machine is set up and control functions have been reviewed, we will review and demonstrate individual workstations. This is the punch station and this station is used to punch holes in material. It utilizes three main components, the punch attachment, the die block, and the coupling wrench. There are numerous punch attachments to choose from, depending on the material you are punching, and they must be signed out from the facilities department and returned when finished. If adjustments to the punch attachments are needed to any tooling, push one of the emergency stop buttons and lock out, tag out the machine before changing the tooling. These punch attachments slide under the safety shield and into the upper beam. It is affixed with a socket head cap screw supplied with the machine. For punch installation, use the coupling wrench to remove the punch coupling nut. Place the punch into the coupling, tip down, and reinstall it into the punch stand. Using the coupling wrench, tighten the coupling nut, and remember, never remove the safety shield. The die block has a bore hole for the die, a set screw to secure the die, and the die block and the three set screws to set the die block location on the platen table. Place the die in the die block bore with the proper side up and lock it into place with the set screw. Before turning on the machine, make sure you have all the required PPE. Next, turn on the machine by lifting both start and stop buttons and place the die block on the platen table. Slowly lower the punch towards the die using the down push button stopping just before making contact with the die. Adjust the position of the die so that the die has uniform clearance around the punch. Once in alignment, lower the punch assembly onto the die block, securing it to the platen. Tighten the two flange nuts on the platen studs and the three set screws till they make contact with the platen studs. Proper adjustment of the three set screws will assist in punch and die alignment in the future. Always check the alignment prior to operation to avoid machine damage. The punch station should be operated using the foot control. Remember, when using the foot control, you must first set the limit switches. Now that the limit switches are set, switch the foot control toggle switch to the on position for operation with foot control and you are now ready to make your punches. After you're done with your punches, turn off the machine by pushing a stop and start button. Retrieve your punch material and clean up the area for the next person. Make sure to disassemble the punch and die and return it to the facilities department when you're finished. 
This is the shearing section of the Piranha and it contains workstations to shear flat bar, angle iron, and brown bar, and it should be operated with the foot control. This hold down is used to clamp the material prior to shearing. This section of the machine is supplied with a safety shield on the material feed side and the drop side of the iron worker to prevent material from being fed from the wrong direction, as well as providing protection on this side. Never feed material to the iron worker from the drop side of the machine and never remove the safety shields. Never attempt to shear material that is not clamped tightly to the table. Never attempt to shear material which is not at least flush with the hold down on the operator side. Always feed material in the iron worker from the hold down side. Never attempt to shear material without the hold down assembly. If the hold down is not correctly applied, it can result in injury to the operator from pinch points, damage the material itself, or the force of the machine could eject the material violently, causing it to become a projectile. Before turning on the machine, make sure you have all the required PPE. Using the button, raise the upper beam to the full position and loosen the adjusting nuts. Insert the material under the hold down and through the blades. Tighten the adjusting nuts to lower the hold down and stop just as the material is secured. This will allow the material to feed freely. Use the material adjusting guide, which is perpendicular to the blades, to ensure a square cut. If you're going to use the foot pedal for your cuts, make sure to set your limit switches first. After your limit switches have been set, switch the foot pedal toggle switch to the on position and make sure that the front or rear selector switch is set to the front and begin making your cuts. After you are done with your cuts, turn off the machine by pushing the stop and start button. Retrieve your cuts and clean up your area for the next person. This is the angle shearing station and it is used to shear various multiple angled materials. Before turning on the machine, make sure you have all the required PPE on. Once you have your PPE on, lift the upper beam to its full up position using the up push button and loosen the adjusting nuts on the hold down bar. Insert the material under the hold down and through the blades and tighten the adjusting nuts to lower the hold down. Stopping just as the material is secured, this will allow the material to feed freely and not be locked into place. Make sure that the angle hold down pad meets the angle iron squarely prior to shearing. Remember, never attempt to shear any material which is not completely held down to the shear table and is not at least flush with the operator side of the hold down. Failure to correctly apply the hold down can result in injury to the operator from pinch points, damage the material itself, or force the machine to eject the material violently, causing it to become a projectile. This station should be operated with the foot control, which means we recommend you set your limit switches to attain the highest efficiency of each stroke. Once your limit switches are set and your foot pedal toggle switch is in the on position, you may proceed with your cuts. After you are done with your cuts, turn off the machine by pushing the stop and start button. Retrieve your cuts and clean up your area for the next person. This is the notcher station of the Piranha. Operating this station is done solely from the rear side of the electrical control box. This is the only station that utilizes the rear control selection switch. The notcher station does not allow for operation with the up and down push buttons. However, you will use the up and down push buttons to set the limit switches for this station. Remember, the notcher station does not allow for use of the downstroke limit switch. Only the upstroke for the notcher station can be set and the upstroke limit switch is now on the left. To set up the upstroke control, you must use the front selection on the control box's selector switch. Before operating this machine, make sure you have all your required PPE. 
Now that you have on your PPE, set the control box selector switch to the front position and turn your foot pedal toggle switch to the off position and raise the notcher safety shield so that you can see the height needed. Start the iron worker by making sure both start and stop buttons are in the up position. Then push the up push button to lower the punch end of the beam, stopping right above your material. Set the upstroke by loosening the thumb screw on the left limit switch and slide it until it rests on top of the indicator roller. Then tighten the thumb screw. Now turn the position selector switch to the rear, transfer your foot control cable to the rear and turn your foot control toggle switch to the on position. The notching process is now ready to be controlled using the foot controller or hands-free operation. Remember to always return the safety guard to the down position for each cut. You are now ready to make your cuts. After you are done with your cuts, turn off the machine by pushing the stop and start button, retrieve your cuts, and clean up the area for the next person. This brings us to the end of our training video on the Piranha Iron Worker. Please remember to follow the strict guidelines mentioned in this video when operating the iron worker. We have covered a lot of important information in this video, so please feel free to review my instructions to ensure that you have a thorough understanding of how to use this machine safely and efficiently. I hope this video has been helpful to you and informative. My name is Lewis, and I'll see you in my next training video.